afternoon and welcome to Borders Rugby Special. With last week's double bill at Kelso and Erlston, this week the Kings of the Sevens have moved to Philip Hawk where Selkirk hosts the penultimate tournament of the season. With two weeks to go, Selkirk, Jed and Melrose are all in with a chance of winning and being crowned Kings of the Sevens. With a look at what happened in the earlier rounds, here's Stuart Cameron. Selkirk went for the knockout format, which means each club are allowed 10 players in their squad. And first up in round one were Kelso and Peebles. Kelso winning that by 17 points to seven. Next up, a close tussle between Gala and Curry, and it was Curry who progressed with a narrow 17 12 victory. Tie 3 saw the host Selkirk take on Berwick, and although the scoreline read 31 0, it was far from one way traffic, but Selkirk went through to the next round. To close the top half of the draw, Hoyk faced Borough Muir, with a very young Greens outfit taking to the field, plus the return to action of their head coach Matty Douglas, who made a welcome cameo in his team's 26-12 win. Melrose and Dalkeith came next, with Melrose taking the tie comfortably against the East League 3 team by 40 points to nil. The only tie with no border team came next, Edinburgh Ackies taking the scalp of Aberdeen University by 27 points to 5. In the penultimate tie, K7's leaders Jed Forrest took to the field, looking very sharp, and rolling Linlithgow over by 36 points to 5. Finally, K7's holders Watsonians beat the President 7, 26-7, to book their place in the quarter-finals. So we come to the quarter-finals and Kelso took on Curry, who were in much better form than at the Kelso 7s a week earlier, running out 26-12 winners to take their place in the first semi-final. Next up, Selkirk against Hoyk, and the Greens no match for the suitors in this one, racing to a big 43-10 win and looking real contenders for the final. Melrose and Edinburgh Ackies was always going to be mouth-watering with three former Melrose players in the Ackies squad, and with Ackies taking this one 24-7, it put an end to Melrose's chance of winning the Kings of the Sevens tournament for this season. The final quarter-final saw favourites Jed Forrest clash with Watsonians, who ran them close last week at Kelso. But at Philippaw, it went the way of Jed Forrest, the borderers dispatching the city side 45 points to 7. That set up a semi-final line-up of Curry against Selkirk and Edinburgh Ackies versus Jed Forrest. Let's join our commentators, Robin Purdy and Andrew Fleming. It's going to be... Curry to get us underway. The winners will face either Edinburgh Ackies or Jed in the final. And here we go. Selkirk with the first possession. Good Curry defence as Finley Whelan's is in over the ball, he's been pulled into the ruck Finley Whelan, so reinforcements are required but it's a, the first penalty of this first semi, goes the way of Selkirk Selkirk looking have looked reasonably comfortable so far in the tournament Andrew Grant, 33 tries to his name so far Cook out to Cottrell one of the playmakers in this Selkirk team, he's got a wee bit of pace about him as well Cottrell, now it's to McComb now it can, has McComb got the lags if he is not, then Finley Whelan certainly will have. It's Whelan's now over the ball, looking to secure the ball for Selkirk. It's Cook to Cottrell. Cottrell with a long pass to Ethan McVicker. It's a two-on-one situation. Selkirk here, Callum Anderson. Can they recycle it? McVicker. Here it comes again to Cottrell. Cottrell with the, the dancing feet. McVicker. Back to Grant Sutty. Selkirk still in the ascendancy here. Cottrell. Out wide. Has that gone forward? Yes, the referees deemed that to go forward. And joining me in the commentary box this afternoon, Andrew Fleming. And positive start by Selkirk, Andrew. It has been, yeah. Selkirk have been really impressive so far this tournament. Especially in that quarter-final against Hoyk. Uh, have you mentioned already, Andrew Grant Sutty. And Ryan Cottrell, standout performance for me. Um, strong start there, but yeah, the pass just the forwards and Curry will have possession with a, a scrum deep in their own 22. Yeah, Curry last week were not particularly impressive after a decent showing at the Melrose tournament. But here they are in a semi-final today at Selkirk. 
their first possession of this semi deep inside their own 22 but it's a missed pass and it's a risky missed pass and this is going to be the first try for Selkirk it's came back in in the hands of Finlay Whelans man of the tournament at Erlston last Sunday but now it's back on the Curry side can Curry go from deep that's Charlie Brett the playmaker in this Curry team been impressive so far this afternoon here goes Gregor Nelson direct stuff from Nelson ball comes back on the Curry side still deep inside their own 22 Curry patient build up play nothing rushed now it's out to the wing and again another loose pass and that's picked up by Selkirk so McVicker Andrew Grant Sati will he straighten and go no looks for his man patient play back to Cottrell Cottrell to Cook weighs up the options back inside to the ex Melrose man McVicker here goes Grant Sati he's got a bit of pace about him does he fancy an, an outside break he does indeed fancy an outside break Andrew Grant Sati and that is the first try of the final and that's his fourth of the afternoon and he is a man in fine form Andrew he is no as you said he's looked very lively in the first two rounds and uh, first try of the day first try of the semi-final here for him and he's uh, he's got that physicality as well which was, goes a long way in sevens but as we said for, for weeks there's no substitute for pace in, in the sevens game and uh, great display of it there and, and Selkirk take take advantage and take the lead yeah 5-0 to Sel Selkirk Andrew Grant Sutty the ex Scotland under 18's man been impressive all series so far and the kick is good to take us to Selkirk 7 Curry 0 very convincing in their victory at Erlston last Sunday but it's Curry now in their own 22 Whelan's up quick in defence but Curry still have it and that's another loose pass by Curry Architects of their own downfall so far in this semi when they have had possession that's going to be a penalty I'm not convinced I think he was taking the air there yeah I could be inclined to agree with you there I think that Curry maybe feel a little bit aggrieved here but it's Cottrell oh and that's an error by Selkirk now can Curry go and that's gone forward now that's going to come back to Selkirk yeah it's going to be a scrum to Selkirk and it's just all been a bit loose by Curry so far it has been yeah a couple of long passes it's just been <laughs> on the borderline and put themselves under pressure and uh, there's no kind of room for that in a, in a semi-final they'll be disappointed with the start they've made a wee bit scrappy from both sides Selkirk coughing up possession a couple of times deep in the, the Curry 22 it's a scrum here to Selkirk almost halfway between the Curry 22 and 10 metre line it's McVicker to McComb Cottrell very impressive at Erlston last week and it's Cottrell oh and Cottrell nice dummy but he's been well marshalled now it's out the back to McComb McComb's up the touchline is McComb in yes McComb's in for the second try of this semi-final and Selkirk looking good for it so far they are yeah as we mentioned Ryan Cottrell already good awareness there to get the offload into Aaron McComb and he, he reads the game so well McComb we've seen that over the years for, for Selkirk a real play playmaker and uh, good spatial awareness of the touchline to go in in the corner and uh, Selkirk extend their lead yeah they, they, they just look a well balanced rounded seven Selkirk at the moment they do they just add that the younger players just add that wee bit more energy um, I would say it's a fantastic conversion there from Aaron McComb Selkirk have looked reasonably comfortable so far in the game you know they're two tries to the good 14-0 but they've not really had to do anything, you know, overly spectacular. They've played, some, they've played some decent sevens, but they 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 look like they've got a bit more, and that can only be a good thing as far as they're concerned. McVicker to Cottrell, Cottrell with a good step and go, as we so often see from him. McVicker again. Finley Whelan's. Here comes Selkirk. Inside. The Curry half, but no longer Andrew Grant Sight. That's good defensive work by Curry. Actually, that was a good tackle, and now it's Curry with a chance to come back at Selkirk here. Now up into the Selkirk half. Where's the support play from Curry? Selkirk in over the ball. The referee's happy for that to come back on the Curry side. Selkirk in again in over the ball. Ethan McVicker. That time, now here come Curry. Brett. 
Sayers Sayers is wrapped up by Cook high, yep. penalty coming yet for the high slightly high shot by Cook Selkirk's discipline has been exemplary in this tournament so far not giving away many penalties but that was on there and here goes Charlie Brett and Charlie Brett has got Lovely. James McCaig James McCaig feeds inside again to Charlie Brett and that's a score back for Curry. Yeah, very well worked score as well. Um, as you mentioned, Charlie Brett and uh, James McCaig linking up well on that left hand side. That's all it takes to maybe turn the tide in these, these kind of games. Eight Selkirk players on the pitch here. They're having a count. Certainly eight players. Yeah, it's called sevens for a reason. <laughs> and I think it's Andrew Grant Sutty who departs to take it to seven apiece. They've done well to notice that there, Selkirk. Actually, they don't want to get slung out of their own tournament, I don't suppose. <laughs> oh, and it's Ooh. been missed by Young Hewlands there, but it's going to come back to Selkirk. Nobody touched that. And here goes McClymont. Now, has McClymont got the pace? He's not, but there's a man that will have the pace. Absolutely, it's Finley Whelans. And Finley Whelans brings up his fourth try of the afternoon. Yeah, very opportunist play there from Scott McClymont. He did well to collect play in his own half and showed the awareness to pouncing the loose ball and the uh, time has passed perfectly into Finley Whelan as you mentioned the player of the tournament last week at, uh, at Erlston and yeah he's he's filled off where he left off last week and still couldn't go further ahead yeah he certainly got a clean pair of heels the youngster but it was really intelligent play by McClymont he didn't he didn't panic he knew he had the pace man on the inside and he was only too happy to supply the pace man with the goods and that converted try 21 points to 5 so here we go again he's dropped that right on the 10 metre line but it's came back on the Curry side Callum Sayers now it's Ryan Stewart Ryan Stewart up the stand side good defence by Callum Anderson but Curry still with the ball kicked forward the challenge when Callum Sayers was deemed to be fair and now it's Selkirk in their own 22 happy to be patient set it up McVicker Monroe job now Boots been put the ball Selkirk happy to concede territory trusting their defence James McCaig he's got a bit of pace James McCaig nice break yeah and he's decided to show that pace now is he going to back himself McCaig he's going to use his footwork he's been well tackled there that's a great tackle great defence by Selkirk they've actually knocked it on in there but yeah that's a great tackle by Selkirk after good work by McCaig you have to say yeah it was, it was a bright break and he really needed support to, to finish off the move it's a shame he didn't get it but uh, no Selkirk uh, very committed at the breakdown and uh, in the defensive work and Curry will have the scrum Oh, that's good, good work, that's good work McComb. by McComb. He's a canny operator, McComb. Now it's a foot race, and it's Cottrell. Cottrell and McCaig. Oh, but it's, it's come back to... It's come back to Lachlan Ferguson, and Lachlan Ferguson's going to go under the post, and that, you feel, Andrew puts the game to bed. Ref's going to have a word with the touch judge here. This yeah. try might not stand. We'll see what they... Matthew Wilkie on that far side, having a tete-a-tete with his fellow official that's and, that's right. been, and that's been ruled out for a for an infringement somewhere along the line by Selkirk and must just carry there by Nelson and that's a good break by Charlie Brack Charlie Brack with a hitch kick but he's been marshalled well there by McComb what's the referee decided there that he's decided there's been an infringement by Selkirk again so starting to get slightly ill-disciplined Selkirk but it's probably not going to do them too much harm as far as the outcome of this semi will go and now it's fallen into the hands of Grant Sutty here we go Selkirk indeed it's McClymont Cottrell over the ball it's going to come back to McVicker he sniped round the side but he was well taken now Monroe Job the youngster 
Selkirk Youth Club player flat pass to McVicker coming at pace on a tight angle but it's been taken by Curry good defence by Curry they, they're sticking in here for all they're worth now they've got numbers over on that far side but they come back on the near side Callum Sayers that looked flat at best and that the referee's deemed the attempt to gather that to come off the boot good defence again from Selkirk McComb again with a last ditch tackle yeah illegal entry that looks like at the ruck by Curry and there's a few weary looking bodies now Andrew there is Ethan McVicker hobbling back to his feet full time Selkirk yeah, into the final the referee blows the full time whistle and indeed Selkirk are into the final of their own tournament with a 21 points to 5 over Curry where they will meet the winners of Edinburgh Ackies or Jed Forrest as we move towards this second semi Gonna be Aki's that man Richard Mill to get us underway. He of many's a Sivens medal over the years. Jed with that settled seven squad, they've remained pretty much injury th injury free through the spring part of this series. Robbie Yurston maybe the only man missing the day that would have staked the claim. So the kickoff taken by Finlay Scott, Dom Buckley. Buckley to Lewis Walker. Young straightens. Back to Buckley. Jed deep in Aki's 22, but looking comfortable in possession. Finlay Scott. Gregor Young back to Gary Munro. Dom Buckley again. Lewis Walker. Rory Marshall Lewis Young had come on the cut Marshall goes and Marshall's away Marshall feeds back inside to Lewis Young Lewis Young to Buckley several touches for Buckley so far in this final now that's going to be that's going to bounce into the hands of Finlay Scott but it's well defended by Aki's albeit they've given away a penalty Buckley again to Lewis Walker Rory Marshall Lewis Young patient play by Jed as is almost a speciality of theirs nothing hurried nothing rushed Gregor Young to Gary Munro now Gary Munro back inside to Finlay Scott Buckley to Walker Walker to Marshall Marshall again with a break now can Marshall go all the way Rory Marshall he's up to the 22 Rory Marshall and it looks like he is going to go all the way great running by Rory Marshall and patient stuff from Jed yeah as you say they don't panic with the ball in hand even when they're 22 very happy to go through the phases and uh, Marshall's done well to get even under post there but no in a repeat of last uh, last weekend semi-final at Kelso I mean Jed had to work very hard to get past Ackies it was a very hard end win to get them into that final we speak about Rory Marshall almost every week a fantastic 15s player and uh, Seven suits him so well, you know, he, he cuts the line very well, he's got fantastic pace and, uh, and physicality and uh, yeah, he's, he's used it to the four there and, and Jed going front. Player of the tournament at Kelso last week in that 7-0 first blood to Jed. Gary Munro with a kick-off. Gives his forwards every chance. Finley Scott up competing but it's come back on the Aki side. So first meaningful possession of the half or if this first semi to, to the Ackies. Rory Campbell loitering with intent on the wing, but they've came back inside. Finlay Simpson trying the last round for him. Now Ross Lyle, formerly of Melrose. Gregor Young in over the ball, but it's back in the hands of Mill. Jane's out wide to Campbell. Now has Campbell got the speed? Campbell's going well down that far side. Campbell with Gary Munro to beat. And Gary Munro's done well to shepherd him into touch. Lewis Young weighs up his options. Now goes Lewis Young. Four tries for him so far this afternoon. Walker 
to Gary Munro. Scott. Now it's Gregor Young. Gregor Young back inside as he's done so often over the years. Now it's Gary Munro. Decent last ditch tackle by Akis, but still in Jed possession as the inch are way into the Akis half. Munro waits patiently. Finds Walker. Walker to Gillespie. Represented Scotland at Sevens Gillespie. Now it's in the hands of Walker and he's got lovely footwork and he showed that on that occasion. And Lewis Walker is in for the second jet try. Yeah, as you mentioned there, Darren Gillespie, he's, he's got so much experience in, in the Sevens game and he, he reads the game so well. Uh, good break initially and he just he doesn't panic, waits for the offload, well timed. And uh, yeah, Lewis Walker, as you mentioned, has been very, very effective signing for, for Jed he's such a good player in this is in the King, Kings of Seven circuit and uh, yeah it looks like he'll go in for the, the second try and Gary Monroe will look to add the, add the extras the referee half time yeah it signals for half time so four, Jed 14 points to the good against Edinburgh and again similar to that last semi Andrew Selkirk looked like they had enough with a wee bit in reserve and as it stands at the moment there's seven minutes to go of course Jed look like they've got Aki's number here without needing necessarily to get in the fifth gear Gary Munro with a kick off and it's gone straight into the hands or it's ended up straight in the hands of Little Gregor Young and that is try number three to Jed yeah that's just like what we spoke about just seconds ago Jed looking to get that fast start in the second half and uh, Jed take a, a further advantage takes them to 19-0 and it's a long way back for the the Aki's from here, so it's going to be that man, man Munro again looking to repeat the feat. Has that gone far enough? It's going to drop right on the 10. That is perfection as far as kickoffs go, but it has come back in the hands of Aki's, to be fair to them. So here they go, looking to work from the Jed half. Aki's not had too much possession in this game so far, but here they come. They need something somewhere from quick, and that's tenacious stuff from. Rory Marshall as is his want Mill Gavin Welsh and Ross Lyle got a bit of pace about him but he's taking the ground on that occasion Aki's still deep in the Jed half Rory Campbell he's a danger man as we've mentioned four tries to his name so Aki's trying to build phases here Max Wallace James with a feed Mill the playmaker Gavin Welsh out to Ross Lyle Jed almost happy to have to let Aki's have the ball here trusting their defence half break there by Campbell oh, and it's come back oh, and that's been knocked on by Aki's and a few phases of play there but it's all come to nothing at the end of the day it has yeah I mean Good patient play from from Akis on the build up, and uh, good to see them playing some playing some rugby and going width to width. And starting to put Jed under pressure, but uh, yeah, little, little little mistakes like that will be greatly received by Jed as they, they look to maybe just slow this game down and reserve some energy going into the going into the final. Yes, yeah, Buckley, and I think that's Lewis Walker coming to the sidelines. Speaking of Lewis's, here's Lewis Young. Trying to add to his four tries so far this afternoon. Darren Gillespie. Oh, lovely inside pass from Gillespie. All the skills. Loose pass from Elliot Stewart, but no danger. It's come to Gary Monroe, except Gary Monroe's dropped it. Commentator's curse there. Ross Lyle, as Ross Lyle cuts inside. Decent half break. Now Aki's coming back at Jed and they've got numbers here Aki's it's James has James got the pace oh. oh James juggles it but he's gone over James and is that too little too late I think it will be um, Aki's will be keen to get the play started quite quickly but uh, I'd imagine it will be too late but they've, uh, they've done well no a good, good confidence booster for, for Aki's and a, a well worked try um, we juggle at the end but uh, no well finished by, by Hamish James here comes Monroe with the tap Jed opting, opting to take the tap and it's Gillespie feeds inside to Elliot Stewart now he's direct he's very direct and that is great running by Elliot Stewart 
And again, another member of this Jets squad that is not here to make up the numbers. Absolutely not, no. I mean, the, the squad depth is, is great to see from Jed, and this is the, the reason why they're the top of the King circuit. Elliot Stewart, fairly new to the uh, the well-established Evans group now, but uh, yeah, no, no slouch and great line, great pace, and uh, and that will certainly book Jed's place in this final. It will indeed, and Elliot, I, I love the way how Elliot Stewart backs himself. He, you know, he doesn't dilly dally. He sees space. He backs himself and he takes it. And more often than not. It culminates in a try as it did on that occasion as they come back to the halfway line. Monroe having added the extras to take us out to 26 points to 5 lead for Jed. And they've stolen that line out for good measure. Stuart Lewis Young. Lewis Young to Robbie Shiragib. Back to Stuart. Back to Scott. Gillespie. Jed more than content to take it back into their own 22. Stewart goes direct. Here comes Gillespie. Lewis Young, the Sheeragib outside him. Again, happy to go backwards. Patient build up play, nothing rushed. It's almost the hallmark of this Jed 7. And here goes Scott. He's got Gregor Young outside, and nobody's going to stop Gregor Young from there as he crosses the. 22, he crosses the try line and you have to say Andrew that is some fantastic all round sevens play by this Jed outfit it is now they do the basics so well and uh, such a danger on the, on the counter attack and that uh, looks like it could be full time yeah the referee draws this second semi-final to a close it's a comfortable victory for Jed Forrest over Edinburgh Aki's they move into the final here at Selkirk where they will pick up minimally seven kings of the sevens points. They're going to face the home side. Selkirk, who will also leave here with minimally seven points. It's Selkirk, the home side, against Jed in the final. <laughs> As you join us back here on Borders Rugby TV for the final of the 2022 Selkirk Sevens. And it's the home side Selkirk who will face off against Jed Forrest. Both having proceeded to the final in reasonably comfortable fashion, it has to be said. Selkirk seeing off Berwick, Hoyk and Curry on route to the final. Whereas Jed put in Lithgow, Watsonians and Edinburgh Ackies to the sword. Jed won this tournament three times, only three times, where a Selkirk have had their name on the trophy on 14 different occasions. And there's a repeat of the 2009 final and 1988, and Selkirk were victorious on both of those occasions. And Andrew Fleming, what's your prediction for this final? <laughs> Top of the call, I must admit. Um, like both teams deserve to be in this final. And quite fitting that both teams are now top of the uh, first and second in the Kings of Sevens title race so very very difficult one to call yeah we'll, we'll see how things go we will indeed and it's going to be Selkirk to get us underway McComb with a kick off and it's Don Buckley underneath it first possession of the final to Jed and it's the first break of the final now it's Gary Munro back to Young has Lewis Young got the pace? Lewis Young's come inside. It's been spilled forward by Lewis Young. Now can Selkirk go from deep? And the referees brought them back for a knock-on and a, a breathless start. McCombs moved to scrum half by the looks of things due to the withdrawal of Ethan McVicker and that could be a blow for Selkirk. McVicker's been impressive this afternoon but it's Callum Anderson, now it's to the young flyer, it's Finley Whelans can he go from deep, Finley Whelans still going yeah. Finley Whelans and he's found Cottrell now can Cottrell go, Cottrell being chased out, and he's got his man Rory Marshall there for support but Rory Marshall's been bundled into action Selkirk have taken it quickly oh, oh, that's a huge hit on Monroe job by Dom Buckley no stranger to the rough and tumble is Dom Buckley and that was a big old hit now what's the referee decided here they're going to go back for a, a conventional line out but yeah 
Monroe job was blindsided. Good to see there they come together for a tap of the hands and Buckley departs proceedings actually for a breather. Darren Gillespie, the wily character, onto the field to do the lifting duties in this line out. But it's came back to Selkirk. Oh, is in. and McComb is in indeed. First try of the final to Aaron McComb and first blood of the final to Selkirk. It's to Selkirk. Yeah, no, a wee bit fortunate maybe there was that line out. Uh, looked like it might have gone astray with the, the fingertips getting at the top of the line out by one of the forwards there. But uh, yeah, well recovered from, from Aaron McComb and he's, he's done well to bury his way over. And uh, yeah, first blood to Selkirk and uh, the home fans are loving it. Yeah, and that's seven rugby, Jed. Early in the piece, very much in the ascendancy with the break, the, you know, the, the break by the, the breaks by the young twins, which almost culminated in a try at the other end, and Selkirk down the park, seven points. And as you can hear from the crowd here, who have, as the bars have emptied, they have come out to support their favourites in the final, and they're a happy bunch so far, but it's 7 0 to Selkirk kick off to come as McComb saunters back to the halfway line he's been in good form the last couple of weeks Aaron McComb him and Ryan Cottrell in that Selkirk midfield and it's a good kick off and he's given Anderson every chance but it's been gathered in by Gregor Young now can Gregor Young go up this near side good marshalling by Monroe Job Gillespie takes it into the contact does well to deliver it back Selkirk, a bit of a dog-legged defensive line. It's come to Gregor Young, to Gillespie. Maybe not as quick as he once was, but uh, skillful nonetheless. But the skills have let him down on that occasion. Actually, he's been brought back for a forward pass, and the opportunity goes for Jed. McComb to feed this scrum. Gillespie pulling that one rather than pushing, as was the tactic there. Cottrell. Oh, now that's gone loose. That's been well gathered. Brave stuff. From Selkirk there. Whelan's it was. Now it's Andrew Grant Sutty. Four tries for him so far this afternoon. Oh, and it's been gathered in by Rory Marshall. Now Rory Marshall's got Monroe. And Monroe's going to cross for the first of the Jed tries. And that brings Jed back into this final. And defence led to attack on that occasion. It did, yeah. No, it was... Andrew Grant Sutty for, for Selkirk who made the break initially and looked to get that offload away but uh, yeah the break of the ball going, going for Jed and uh, Guy Monroe down the left hand side and uh, suddenly back in this final Almost astonishingly that's Gary Monroe's first try this afternoon man of the tournament at Langham of course in the final a, a tournament defining tackle in the final last week and he's kicked that conversion from reasonably far out as well and Again, we talk almost repeatedly about this Jed squad and the, quali the individual qualities that they all have, but it's their cohesion as a, as a team unit that's almost as impressive as McClymont is on for Selkirk, pulls the socks up, ready to go. And Monroe, as he so often does, has given his forwards every chance. That's been well gathered in there by Anderson for Selkirk three tries for him so far this afternoon Selkirk now with a possession it's out to Hewlands Hewlands now Hewlands is quick but again well marshalled Lewis Young the ball's going to touch and it's going to be a line out to Jed Lewis Young when Jed had started to look a wee bit jaded in the semi-final at Erlston last week which is absolutely understandable after their exertions the day before at Kelso Lewis Young was beaten on the outside by Archie Pilcher and Melrose but he, there's no way he was going to let it happen there great defence by Young now Marshall here comes Young again up the middle as he's done so often over the years for this Jed side good counter ruck by Kelso illegally however says Sam O'Neill a referee and it's Gary Monroe only Marshall to his left, so he brings it back in. Young again, route one this time. Lewis Walker. Now Don Buckley comes at pace, but that's a good hit. Andrew Grant Satie. 
but good maintaining a possession by Don Buckley and it's come up for Finlay Scott Finlay Scott takes it oh, and there's some off the ball stuff going on here the referee's going to bring them back of yeah, course it was, it was Don Buckley and Scott McClymouth getting involved there and there was a kick out from one of them we'll be interested to see what the referee makes of that I'm not sure who was at fault initially but both players are getting fired in yeah, Don Buckley certainly needs no second invitation to that side of the game. So the referee's going to consult his assistant here. Sam O'Neill's going to consult his touch judge. It was Scott McClymont. Now, what are they going to come up with here? Did McClymont possibly I kick think, out I think there Buckley? might have been a, a, a kick out there. That's what Buckley wasn't too enamoured by, and, and understandably, but... Uh, Oh, and it's going to be McClymouth. Now, what's going to happen here? There's a card coming out. The question is, what colour? Red cards, yeah. Red card in the final of the Selkirk Sevens, and he kicked out at Don Buckley. Scott McClymouth, and... Oh, that's a sore one to take. Has he sold the jerseys here? Now, this is going to be Herculean stuff. From Celtic, and that is an unbelievable touch finder for, from Gary Munro. All the kicking skills from Munro, whether it's touch finders from penalties, whether it's conversions, whether it's restarts, he has got it all. And it's going to be him to throw into this line out. And my word, Selkirk with six men, this would be quite something. But it's won the line out, they've won the line out indeed. They're going to have to go from deep here. Buckley wraps up McComb. Is Buckley going to be the pantomime villain in this final? You would imagine so. Oh, and Boot was put to ball, and it's been fumbled by Selker, but they've maintained possession He's only just. It was Cottrell. He needed his mate Finley Whelans to bail him out on that occasion. Oh, oh and it's been yeah. fumbled again. Now the referee brings the... <laughs> the first half of this Selkirk final to a close and Selkirk will go into the second half a man down after the the main talking point of that first half which is a red card for McClyman after the kick out on Buckley and they go in 7 all but Selkirk have got it all to do from here they have yeah I, mean, I can't, can't say I'm too surprised with the decision I, I did see it in real time and it didn't look good um, you know it's for the moment things, these things can happen but uh, yeah, an understandable decision and it's going to be a very tough ask for the circuit side to to win this final now but with the backing of the home crowd you never know what's possible but Jed will be licking their lips now with the, the chance to wrap up the, the King's title with a win today Dom Buckley there as mentioned he could be the pantomime villain of this second half but you know if any of the Selkirk faithful did see that incident then they would realise that the right colour of card was shown it's been taken in there by Anderson of Selkirk Grant Saty to Cottrell Lachlan Ferguson's come onto the field, now it's Finlay Whelans he's a quick individual Finlay Whelans didn't get the chance to go on the outside there so Selkirk are going to look to maintain possession here and it's, it's Anderson but Anderson fancies a crack on the outside Oh, and it's, it's a decent enough inside ball but it's gone to ground and now Jed come up with a possession and it is that man Buckley now whether or not that would be a popular score around these parts will remain to be seen but <coughs> it's in the hands of Lewis Young Lewis Young to Rory Marshall and Selkirk in illegally fans on the far side not too happy with that decision as you can see there but it's Monroe uses Young as the decoy now it's Dom, Dom Buckley he's been wrapped up by two Gregor Young to Finley Scott to Lewis Young to Rory Marshall Rory Marshall with the footwork to Lewis Walker speaking of footwork and there's another penalty coming Jed's way will Lewis Young fancy a run down that far side it's been spilled forward but they'll come back from the penalty they'll come back for the penalty and 
Don Buckley leaving the field there to be replaced by Dan Gillespie again. And yeah, Buckley's just been involved in, in everything it seems in this final. Um, <clears throat> a number of big hits on him, and he's been heavily involved in the breakdown. And you can see him. He's went really well in this final, Don Buckley, you have to say. And Darren Gillespie is his replacement. I talk about the frying pan to the fire for these Selkirk players. Now it's Gregor Young. Well defended there by McComb. It's going to come back on the Jed side with Monroe. Monroe with a long looping pass infield to Marshall. Marshall to Finlay Scott. Absolute workhorse of this Jed team. And here's another one, Rory Marshall. Now Rory Marshall's on the arcing run. Great defence there from Whelans, but it's came back to Lewis Young, and Lewis Young dots down in the corner. And the referee's awarded the try. Yeah, it's, yeah good play down that right-hand side. Rory Marshall takes some stopping and the uh, second def defender did well to wrap him up but the I mean, Jed are so good at the, uh, the supporting play and uh, yeah Lewis Young as he's done for years and years in this circuit um, always there to provide support and he's, he's gone in the corner and Jed back in front but Selkirk even with six men they're getting very much stuck in at the breakdown and uh, could this be the turning point we'll, we'll soon see pushed that one Monroe not giving his forwards the opportunity but it's bounced deep into the Selkirk 22 and it's Cottrell he needs to go from deep they're going to need some magic from him possibly that's Ferguson but he's wrapped up by Walker now is that's a choke tackle by Jed are they going to hold that up it's still moving forward Marshall's in there as well trying to ensure that it doesn't get to ground it's gone to ground now but yeah that was always going to come back and be or the outcome there was always going to be a Jed scrum. It was, yeah. And as we said, I mean, Jed uh, they did the basics so well, and uh, yeah, well, well wrapped up there by at least two or three defenders, and uh, crucial turnover possession, and especially with the three men tucked into this scrum for Je for Selkirk, you'd think that Jed will be keen to get the ball out on this on his back line out to Lewis Young and uh, try and get the third try. Yeah, no, but will Walker oh, go? It's oh, Walker. it's going to be it's going to be Walker that's going to go down that far side, and Walker's in. Oh no, Walker's going to be pulled back for a foot in touch. So Selkirk surviving by the skin of their teeth here. It's going to be McComb to throw into this line out in front of a large home support on that far side, willing their team on. Oh, it's oh, gone right oh, over the head, dear. and it's into the most grateful hands of Finlay Scott not only does he touch down he goes under the post with a kick to come and that could be game set and match I think it will be yeah I think it could be the title winning uh, score not only in this tournament but the, the Kings of the Sevens title for Jeds and uh, Selkirk will be absolutely gutted with that one they've, they have really played well with, with six men despite the climate side card they've got really stuck in the second half so with not long left in this final it's Monroe to restart Gillespie underneath it it's been it's gone back on the Jed side did it come forward either way it's Jed possession Walker Monroe Lewis Young five tries now for Lewis Young does he fancy a six he's come inside Lewis Young he's going to go in at the corner Lewis Young six tries for him takes him to the top scoring player of the tournament great running from Lewis Young Jed have just uh, done the basics so well they don't panic in possession and they, they can create things from nothing and uh, I've just seen they've, they're very dangerous and they've uh, yeah, they've got themselves into what looks like a, an assailable lead Yeah, Selkirk looking for a consolation now Ross Lyle drafted in from Aki's good footwork That's still going true. and he's got Anderson outside of Callum Anderson's going to go in at the corner and the crowd are happy with that effort from the home side and good effort absolutely no I mean uh, I was spoken about throughout the afternoon Ryan Cottrell it was it made the initial break and fantastic pace he's, he's shown especially in that quarter final against Hoyk and uh, in every time he's played today he's, he's been fantastic and that looks like it could be the last play but fantastic try there created by Ryan Cottrell and finished off in the corner by, by Callum Anderson yeah it's going to be the last play right enough as McComb steadies himself for the conversion which is unsuccessful so 
the 2022 final is brought to a close it's Jed Forrest 24 on the home side Selkirk 12 Jed victors here 10 kings of the sevens points in the bag it takes them to an unassailable 58 points with their own tournament to come and you have to say Andrew they have been the best side here today they have been uh, and on the title and on the series throughout the uh, throughout the summer and um, yeah they've thoroughly deserved they've uh, it's the squad depth we've spoken about for, for every, almost every tournament it feels uh, you, th- you think of Jed and you think of the young twins and the and Rory Marshall but it, it's a, a huge squad effort I mean the likes of Finlay Scott does the, the basics so well and you've got Gary Monroe such a talented player with the ball in hand and, uh, and Don Buckley doing the hard work up front I mean it's, it's a squad effort and they've been uh, yeah, very very impressive throughout the throughout the Kings title and um, yeah thoroughly deserves Lewis Kings of the Sevens yeah. with one round to go what about that? I know we, we aimed for that like we knew we could secure it here if we got the win and uh, we dug deep. I mean, we, we, we struggled on Sunday, uh, probably due to tired legs, but um, to come here and back it up today is just unbelievable. It was a different Jed from last week, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was. I mean, we struggled in the first tie, I think, just getting the, the Sunday out of the way, um, but we just progressed, came on, and to be honest, we, we just dominated, dominated today, absolutely dominated it. Got to mention the red card, of course, a big uh, influence. Um, yeah. Six against seven is it's not easy to play uh, Jed, you know, yeah. with with seven players, but yeah. to, to go down to six as well. But you took advantage of yeah, it. Yeah, we, we knew we knew we had the one up on them when when we got the red. Like, but it's tough playing it against a team with we, we, one man down. You know, you, you kind of lose your own shape as well. But um, no, we, 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 we were disciplined as well and we did it um, and, and obviously the red card helped us in the end. <laughs> well, the history, of course, here at Selkirk for Jed Forrest hasn't been great. You've been in 10 finals, only won three of them. Yeah. So you lost seven finals, but you certainly uh, got it today. And as I say, it really, from the word go for, against Linlithgow today, it really did click. I know we did. We, we knew if it clicked today, then we were going to go all the way. And, and playing Selkirk in a final here is a tough, tough, tough ask. Like, crowd were, were, were behind them the whole way and it was difficult but um, yeah we, 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 we've been like this all season really for the sevens we, we dig deep for each other and, and that just showed today as well one round to go it's yeah. the Jed Forest sevens so you can relax a wee bit but yeah. uh, you'll want that cherry on the top uh, we, we, we don't want to go out there and just say oh, that's, that's King's done we, we're going to win that like definitely it's uh, it's one for us to win there and that, that'll just seal it for us it'll be it'll be the best feeling ever that one like <laughs> well I think the uh, president of the board league and president of Selkirk Jim Harold said you raised the bar this yeah, season yeah. you certainly have well done yeah thank you I know it's been a tough one but uh, no hats off to the boys who've dug deep at training and, and we've done it today and what a way to finish <laughs> After a fantastic afternoon of rugby, Jed Forrest are finally crowned Kings of the Sevens after a controversial yet exciting final. Next week we're off to Jed Forrest for the final Kings of the Sevens tournament at Jed Forrest. I hope you can join us there. Cheerio!